Hello, everyone, and we're back. And we're back in everyone's favorite place, Excel. Um, so what I want to show you today is how we're going to calculate the mean and the standard deviation in Excel, which is going to take you a fraction of the time that it did in class. You're welcome. Um, we're going to calculate that, and then I'm going to show you how to make um, a bar graph with that information and throw in your error bars. So we're getting very, very fancy in Excel right now. Okay, so like I said, I already pre-input this data and you probably recognize this data from class because it's the same example we used. Thus, we will get the same values and that is exciting. Okay, so, boom. We, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna put in our average. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put in our average. Um, which we're going to call the mean because we're fancy. And we do this by selecting the cell that's underneath our set of data. Um, so I'm going to put in, I'm going to select that cell that's underneath the set of data I want the average for, and I'm going to hit the equal sign. Then I'm going to go up to here where I'm going to find a formula. Um, so if average isn't the first thing that pops up, you can scroll through here and you will find it. Now I click on average. And this box pops up and it's like, well, what would you like the average of? How about B2 to B11? Well, I want the average of here to here, which is indeed B2 to B11, right? So I press enter and I get a number. I get the average. Now, I want to do the same thing for data set two. I also want the average of that. I am going to take my cursor and place it over the cell that gave me the average of the first set. And I'm going to wait until that little um, cross turns black. I'm going to click. I'm going to drag it over. And that's basically going to put the same formula underneath the second set of data. But I only have to input it once. Exciting. Um, all right. So that's how we get our average. That's exciting. The next thing that we're going to do is get our standard deviation. And you're going to be so mad when you see how easy this is on Excel because I made you do it on your calculators before. So standard V. Okay, so for my standard deviation, I have to do one more step. It's like a little bit of extra hunting, but you'll be fine. Um, it's a couple more clicks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to formulas and more functions, right? In more functions, look what happens. Look at that first thing that comes up. It's statistics. That's exactly what I want. So I click on statistics and I get this really nice list, and I'm going to ignore everything until I scroll down and I see, wait for it, get out of the way. Okay, um, standard deviation, um, make sure you click dot S. That's for sample standard deviation. That's the only one that the IB wants you to look at. So great, right? Just one, so exciting. So I click on that and I'm gonna tell it what values. And I want all the values in my set, but you have to be careful not to click the mean. You don't want that in your set. Once you've got that highlighted, you hit Enter. Now we're going to do that fabulous trick again, and we're going to wait for the thing to turn black. You scooch it over, it applies the formula over there. Awesome. And this is actually exactly what we were so hoping to see, right? We wanted to see that the data set with only two values in it had a much higher standard deviation than the data set where the mean actually represents the data decently well. And that's what we got. So, Part two, great, we got standard deviation, we got the mean, now we're ready to chart it, yeah, yes. Okay, so here we are making a chart. Now, we have to do a little bit of, there's a little bit of redundancy here, but you're gonna be fine. So you wanna type in set one, oops, set, ooh, set two, and the mean. Why am I doing this all over again? Because Excel is weird. It's very picky. It's very easily offended. So I'm just going to do the Excel rules the way that they want me to do them um, because I like it when it calculates things for me. That's very nice. It's Excel. So next to the mean, I'm going to do my formula again to get this average. So equals, I go up here. There's my average. I want the average of the data set original. Um, I don't want the mean to be in there, and I don't want the standard deviation in there. So I click, enter, there we go. Here's my trick again, until it turns black, click and drag. It's beautiful, beautiful. So now here's what I'm going to do. Highlight everything, 
and I'm going to go to insert. Here I'm going to find my bar graph, which they call a column graph because they're fancy. That's fine. I'm going to push clustered column because why not? And look at that. So exciting. Um, except sad times. Now I have to put in error bars. Okay. So now I've got this graph. Next step. We're going to right click on set one. Um, Max, you're going to, I don't know, the Mac version of, of right click. Um, and you now want to go to select data. That's right here. Then you're going to do this. Oh, hold on. I need to move me. Ah, there we go. You need to switch row or column. Right? I wish I had an explanation for why we do this for you, um, but I don't. It's just Excel. You just say, okay, Excel, I'm, gonna, I'm willing to let you do this because you're going to make me get hundreds on all my labs. And I love it. Okay, so there. We switched it. Awesome. Now they're two different colors. I love it. Okay. Uh, except now, even though they're two different colors, it just says mean underneath it, which tells me nothing. So I have to go to my plus sign and click. Oh, there I am. I'm in the way again. Sorry. Move me. Okay. Here. Yay. So I click my plus sign and I'm going to put in legend. Lovely. Now I have a set one and a set two. Now, if you want to double check and make sure that your set one is indeed set one and set two is indeed set two, um, you can just click on the bar, right? And I want that to say set one. And look, it's blue and it's set one and it's highlighted over here for set one. Double checking. I love it. Very exciting. Okay. So finally, we get to put in our error bars. I know. Excited? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click here. I'm clicking on my, my set one. I'm going to go to my plus sign. And I'm going to click error bars. Click this little arrow. And you want to go to more options. Ooh, moving again. Right here are all of my options on the side. None of them are adequate. I want to go to custom. Under custom, and hopefully I can move this. Ooh, yeah. Next to custom, it's going to say specify value. We want the value of our error bar to be the same as our value of standard deviation. Luckily, we already calculated that. So I'm going to put specify value. And what value do I want? I'm moving all over the place. What value do I want? I want the value that corresponds to the standard deviation of set one, which luckily we already calculated. It's right there. So I click on it and hit enter. What? I know. There's my error bars. Now I'm going to do it again, except for the orange one. Click on the orange one. Move myself out of the way. Click on the plus sign. Error bars, please. More options, please. Custom, please. Specify value. Moving out the way. I want the value that represents the standard deviation of set two. It's that. Click enter. OK. And now look what happened. Look what happened. Your error bars magically adjusted themselves. And that's awesome. Um, because now the error bars are showing you, hey, set two has way more error in it than set one does. Um, and that's what we want to see. And we want to see it with standard deviation. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend that even if you copy and do exactly what's on here and you just redo it yourself to make sure you get the same values, awesome. You want to practice this because you're going to have to do it forever and always. Um, so definitely, definitely, please make sure that you practice this um, at home and you get comfortable and familiar with it um, so you can just be successful and great forever and always. All right, and I will see you tomorrow, hopefully without any error bars.